And then I, I find at 106, you know, this is a really great place. Um, one of the things that I've done at 106 to be really helpful is I've written out the entire line mm -hmm. as we get into this sort of tossing everybody about. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll write out the entire line for the entire ensemble and reorchestrate it. Uh, so that it's in their key, so that we can play the whole thing together as an ensemble. Mm -hmm. um, instead of breaking it off into bits and pieces, um, as you've done here, mm -hmm. having them play the entire thing, I think, allows for a continuity when it comes to actually then breaking it off into pieces. They understand how that works. And I found that to be very successful. Um, because to me, every note uh, in this section from 104 all the way through to to you know, 116 where it kind of, or really 113 where it comes to a, a, a big culmination is important. Every single note has to have that sort of clarity of articulation. Mm -hmm. And that I think requires some really careful practice mm -hmm. from uh, the conductor and from the ensemble itself. Yeah, I think it's important to remember, despite the fact that there are a lot of, it's dense, there are a lot of notes on the page, there are really only two things happening. You've got bump, 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 Bum, ba, bum. You've got that, and you've got ba da da, ba da da, ba da da. That's really it. Anything else is just reinforcing or, or little orchestrational things, but it's just two main things happening here in counterpoint with one another. And I often find that the 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 ba da dum, ba da dum, ba da dum is always too short because mm -hmm. you don't have any. You have accents here, but you don't have short staccato notes no. printed. No. So ba da dum, ba da dum, ba da dum, ba da dum, ba da ba da ba da 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 da. Uh, that's, I think, one of the other miscalculations. Yep. I find that too, and often I find they don't play enough on the accents, though. Da 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 You know, that da 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 You've got to have the accent there. It can't just be da 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 That's too, there, it's too vanilla. There's not enough character. They don't bring out the first note in each three-note group. And then each one of these, of course, builds, and, and uh, I think we have a good sense of, of 119, then we get the fortissimo piano uh, in the trumpets. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, um, that to me, uh, in my mind at 119, when I'm thinking of rehearsing this, I'm thinking, okay, beat one is, is the trumpets really dominating that sound with fortissimo. And then beat two is trombones That's right. and, and the low brass. And beat three is kind of the trombones and low brass. And beat four is the trumpets overtaking all of that getting back to bum ba da uh, really leading to those upper woodwinds. Ba ba da ba 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 da da ba da ba 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 all the way through. Mm -hmm. So that it really has that part of, of connection. And then we get to 122. Do you take a space there before 122? Oh yes. I'm, so we well, take ba ba da And I imagine this is what I do. I get to that spot, dum ba da be ba ba da I'm imagining that bass line, that's about eight beats, that's about four seconds. Yeah. And then I go on from there. And then you bring them in at 122. That's, that's what I do, okay. instead of counting right. seconds. And then, you know, I mean, it's, it, for me, I don't ever give the alto saxophone or the flute anything other than, here's my clarinet chord, now go to it. You know, enjoy that sound and enjoy the sound of the flute coming in, um, back, of course, to the beginning with the snare drum uh, licks. And then, as we talked about earlier in the last uh, segment, um, when we get to 128, I think it's so important that your beat two and four are really clear for the entire ensemble. Mm -hmm. And as you alluded to, um, one of the rules that I have at 132 is I make all of the uh, flute players in my ensemble that are going to play that at 132 raise their right hand and say, I do solemnly swear I will count my rest and know that it never will feel comfortable to commit at 132. Because <laughs> it never does. Um, so it's really important that they they know that, but also as a conductor, I think it's critical that you're with them right at 132 when that comes in. Otherwise, as you said, they come in on beat, yeah. uh, on beat th uh, two or four. Yeah. Well, they're basically, they're hearing what they have to hear, rather. One. That's right. One. They just, they just have to get that. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's, it, it can be confusing. Um, and then, you know, one of the other parts that's slightly different, I think, is when we look at 139 and 140 now, we have these quarter notes with accents on them. And I think they tend sometimes to sound like half, or eighth notes as well, because they get too short. Yeah. But you really now, this is a different accent than the house top. 
And I think trying to make sure that the students understand those differences is really critical between the dot and the accent and the house top. Mm -hmm. um, and then really from there, it's just a matter, I think, stylistically of doing all the things that we've talked about with the theme and with the legato theme uh, to make sure that from here to the end that it is really balanced. Mm -hmm. Let me just add one thing. I, I think the composer made a big mistake at 143. No. By marking the horns mezzo forte. That yes. should be full forte already. Absolutely. Right. No, I agree with you there. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I didn't even think about that. I, I tend to go fortissimo yeah. even sometimes right it's away just, just to get that out. Yeah, I, you know, I, you can see why I did it. It's in, it's in the context. We're still in mezzo forte land right. because we're still building. But the horns need to forget that and, and sort of announce here we are. And, and forget the mezzo forte. So now talk to me about um, the very end at 155, the poco retard. Mm. Because again, we, you know, we may have different ways of approaching this, but I tend to do a lot more molto retard. Mm -hmm. And then at 158, hit the gas. Uh -huh. And that's okay. I, I was after a more subtle approach, so like one, two, three, four, one, rip, three, four, one, pom, 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 pa -dum, pom, pom, pom. Most conductors milk that retard for all it's worth there, yes. and that's fine. Yes. If that works for you, that's fine. I don't do it that way. Fantastic. I like for, because I don't want to lose too much momentum this close to the end. But when other conductors do it, it they, if they can do it in a convincing way, then I'm all for it. Right, and that's the key. Yeah. For me, the convincing way to do that is to remember that golden rule, which is the more things slow down, the longer they have to get. Yeah. So those three quarter notes in 157 broad. have to be really broad and really stretched out and really sustained. That's right. Otherwise, it doesn't work, yeah. that, that slow tempo. The uh, biggest, then, biggest problem I have at the end is right there at 158 to get the... Uh, that's right. All three of those have to be there, and it's the one that gets lost is the timpani, low brass, the third right. one. Bum, you bum. often get, but we don't get that last one in the right place, at the right dynamic, and at the right tempo. Yeah, and finding, and really just isolating that in rehearsal is, is important. Very important. Uh, so that everybody understands exactly uh, where and who's coming and where, and, yeah. and particularly when you've got the trumpets way up on this range, and then the low brass and timpani, you know, in that low range, it's harder to hear them. And I often find asking the timpanist to play a lot stronger is really helpful mm -hmm. at that moment to the trombone color. Yeah. Good, and then the very end, of course, is just one big crescendo uh, with all of these triplets and then 16th notes, uh, and then allowing those uh, trombones to really uh, enjoy that a great deal. And of course, you know, those glisses work so beautifully, um, particularly uh, the first trombone and the second trombone, as long as they start at that in sixth position on the third trombone and really rip that F uh, up to the B flat, um, you can get a, a really impressive big sound. And then even, you know, even though you, you say it, it's, it's critical that the percussionists just jump on that sound at the end so that there's no overbleed of, of any cymbal crashing uh, or bass drum sound for that matter that tends to ring uh, at the end. I remember I struggled with the inning, whether I wanted to have or whether I wanted the tritone one oh. final time. I decided since we're at the end, just for resolution, it's all B flat. So, yeah, and you've got it all in the bass line as well. All right. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, the other way could have worked. Yeah, too, it could have, but I, went, I wanted the resolution. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. Pleasure.